Good day, everyone. We're back with ASEAN News, and here they are. Japan begins to accelerate vaccination program in the country. As Japan is accelerating its COVID-19 vaccination program, many companies across the country have opened their own vaccination centers. At rental office center in Tokyo, Japan's capital, 750 people from over 30 companies gather to get their shots on the first day of vaccinations. The Japanese government announces that large companies with over 1,000 employees alongside universities can begin vaccinating their staff and students. Around 3,500 have applied to open centers, which will deliver shots to 14 million people, including their employees, family members, and nearby residents. A total Kukan produce, a rental office business open its vaccination center to any company with over 50 employees can apply to get their employees a jab. The company has established 20 vaccination centers nationwide. So far, around 50,000 people are scheduled to receive a jab. Last month, the government opens large-scale vaccination centers, which help accelerate the process. But the private sector drive is seen as a key strategy. Some experts say that it will not only widen availability, but also help to encourage those who are still hesitant to get their jab or concerned about side effects. Meanwhile, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says that all residents who want a vaccine will be able to receive one by November. President of China thanking the astronauts through the video call on the space station for their hard work. Chinese President Xi Jinping talks with three astronauts aboard the Tianhe space station via a video call. The video call is made around 9.30 a.m. Beijing time and broadcast live on state broadcaster CCTV. She speaks to the crew from the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center, thanking the astronauts for their hard work and sending sincere regards on behalf of their fellow countrymen. The astronauts Ni Haisheng, 56, Liu Poming, 54, and Tang Hongbo, 45, departed Earth and entered the unfinished Tianhe Space Station capsule that evening. They will leave aboard for the space station for a total of three months, testing its various systems and getting the module fully up and running. Chinese space station Tianhe, due to be finished by end 2022, will be the only alternative to the two-decade-old United States-led International Space Station, which may be retired in 2024. Filipinos are not happy with President Duterte threatening people who refuse to receive vaccines will be jailed. Manila resident says they are displeased with President Rodrigo Duterte's threat to jail people who refuse to be vaccinated. You choose get vaccinated or I will have you jailed. I'm telling you, those police jail cells are filthy and full smelling. Police are lazy in cleaning. That is where you will be. Duterte's remarks contradict those of his health officials who have said that while people are urged to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, it is voluntary. As of June 20, Philippine authorities had fully vaccinated 2.1 million people, making slow progress towards the government's target to immunize up to 70 million people this year. Recording nearly 1.3 million infections and over 23,000 deaths, the Philippines is battling the second highest COVID-19 caseload in the region next to Indonesia. Pope appeals to Myanmar leaders for humanitarian corridors. Pope Francis appeals to Myanmar's military leaders to allow aid to reach displaced, hungry people who have led fighting since the February 1st coup and to respect religious sites as places of sanctuary. 
In St. Peter's Square, Francis says he wants to add his voice to an appeal last week by Myanmar's Catholic bishops. The Pope, who has made many appeals for the release of political prisoners in Myanmar, speaks of the heartbreaking experience of thousands of people in that country who are displaced and are dying of hunger. He backs the bishop's appeal to authorities to allow humanitarian corridors in order to get aid to displaced people and to respect churches, pagodas, monasteries, mosques, temples, schools and hospitals as neutral places of refugee. Meanwhile, the United Nations General Assembly calls all nations for a stop to the flow of arms to Myanmar and urges the military to respect November election results and release political detainees including detained leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Rohingya refugees consider the COVID-19 pandemic and the Myanmar coup add to their misery. Rohingya refugees in camps in Bangladesh says the coronavirus lockdown and a coup in Myanmar has added their miseries and they had very little to look forward to. The Rohingya are a minority group, most of whom are denied citizenship by Buddhist majority Myanmar. Nearly one million of them are now living in often squalid tent cities in the district of Cox's Bazar near the Bangladesh-Myanmar border after fleeing a military crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine state nearly four years ago. Our life is finished. Our life is dead. Now we are not thinking about ourselves, just thinking or about our future generation very much. The refugee camps are under lockdown to mitigate the spread of coronavirus, and many Rohingya said they felt the pandemic was diminishing international concern over their situation as countries struggle to contain the virus and its impact at home. The political situation in Myanmar is also not helping now. The Burmese are unhappy. Bangladesh is keen to see the Rohingya go back to Myanmar, but there has been little sign of progress in talks with Myanmar's military junta. Meanwhile, UNHCR says the number of people forced to flee their homes due to the conflict, persecution and human rights abuse had doubled in the past decade to reach 82.4 million at the end of 2020. At least eight people died when Myanmar's security forces invaded in Mandalay. The country's army-owned Miyawari Television, in a report released on its Telegram message channel, says Myanmar's security forces raided a house in Mandalay, killing four terrorists and then shooting dead another four as they were driving in a vehicle. A newsreader adds that eight people were arrested during the raid and some security personnel were seriously hurt. Since the army seized power on February 1st and removed the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi, the security forces have put down protests opposing military rule. In response, groups of opponents of the coup, knowing as People's Defense Forces, have sprung up across Myanmar. A group claiming to be Mandalay's new People's Defense Force says its members responded after the army raided one of its bases. About 20 soldiers had carried out the raid on the group sparking a gunfight with the military, which deployed three armored cars to the area. Another official from the militia group tells the Mizima news portal that six of its members had been arrested and two soldiers had been killed. A spokesman for the junta did not answer calls seeking comment. Indo-Yaki Celebrate Benefit joins the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement at the Asia and Europe meeting. Vietnam is also part of the dialogue. The United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab attends the Asia-Europe meeting, ASEM, held in Hanoi as part of his Asia-Pacific tour. Thank you very much. Rapp in his speech exhorted the benefit of joining the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, which the United Kingdom began negotiations as the country pivots away from Europe and towards geographically more distant but faster-growing economies post-Brexit. 
Rob also urges country to work together for a global solution for the COVID-19 pandemic. Vietnam also be part of the ASEM. ASEM this year also commemorates the 25th anniversary of the founding of the summit and is held in hybrid format with foreign ministers of Vietnam, United Kingdom, South Korea and Singapore present in Hanoi, while the rest of the member countries participate via video conference. The ASEM Forum is made up of 21 Asian countries and 30 European countries, the ASEAN Secretariat and the European Commission. Hong Kong political raised concerns after Hong Kong celebrate national security law for one year. Hong Kong will mark one year anniversary of Beijing's sweeping national security law. The law makes anything Beijing regards as subversion, cessation, terrorism or colluding with foreign forces punishable by up to life in prison. After more than a year of civil unrest, including the dramatic storming of cities, legislature, the vandalizing of the Chinese government's liaison office in the city, and prolonged clashes at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Critics of the legislation say the law has crushed the city's democratic opposition, civil society and western-style freedoms. Most pro-democracy activists and politicians have found themselves snared by the law or arrested for other reasons. Dozens of activists were arrested on January 6 and charged with conspiracy to commit a subversion. Their case is set to resume on July 8. The national security law has raised concern about prospects for the autonomy Hong Kong is promised under the one country, two systems formula when it was handed over to China in 1997. The law supporter says it has restored order and improved prospects of the city's economy. United States Special Envoy meets South Korean President in Seoul to talk about nuclear. United States Special Representative for North Korea Sung King meets South Korean President Moon Jae-in in Seoul during his first trip since assuming the role last month. Sung King arrived in Seoul for a five-day visit, had back-to-back -back meetings with South Korea's top nuclear envoy, No Kyu Duk, as well as a trilateral session involving his Japanese counterpart, Takehiro Funakoshi. Sung Kim says he is willing to meet with the North Koreans anywhere, anytime, without preconditions, and that he looks forward to a positive response soon. North Korea's senior official in the ruling party and sister of leading Kim Jong-un, Kim Yo-jong released a statement in state media saying the United States' expectations on talks will only bring greater disappointment to Washington. Voluntary diver groups bleaching fishing nets to protect coral reefs. Forty divers remove abandoned fishing nets covering coral reefs in a protected area in the Gulf of Thailand in two-day operation and its ending. The group of volunteer divers and the Coastal Resources Research Center, helped by the Royal Thai Navy, revealed long lines of coral bleaching inside the protected area around Kolosin. The divers tied plastic bags filled with air to the net to get it float to the surface, carefully cutting the parts caught in the coral. The divers carry out six trips over the weekend to complete the operation. <laughs> 
Diver Volunteer SOS Group says the nets, which were 2,750 square meter in size, had been in the area around Kolosing, about 72 kilometers or 45 miles of the coast of the Thailand's southern Patani province, for a month and a half. It is estimated that these nets could cost over a million baht or $32,000. After the nets removed from depths ranging from 13 meters to 26 meters, about 500 square meter of bleached reef was discovered. The reef is expected to recover in two or three months. According to the United Nations, about 640,000 tons of fishing nets end up in the ocean globally every year, becoming ghost gear. And that's the wrap up. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice weekend.